today for our celebration as we come together as God's family with hope and faith to share in the abundant and joyful gifts of love that our Lord Jesus Christ offers to us. We come for this fourth Sunday in ordinary time to experience Christ's loving presence through his word proclaimed, his body and blood freely offered, and through his loving presence in one another. Before we begin our time of thanksgiving and praise, please silence your cell phones. Take a few moments of quiet prayer as we ready ourselves to encounter our Lord and Savior in the miracle of this holy Eucharist. Let us now stand and welcome those around us to our celebration. Our readings today can be found on page 1102 of the Decay of the Books. That's 1102. And please join in singing our opening hymn on 596. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior, number 596. <laughs> our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thank you. 
let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I will, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not com commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's <clears throat> last word of the psalm is number 66. If today you hear God's voice, number 66. <clears throat>
first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman, or a virgin, is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Sabbath, Jesus entered the Sabbath synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. <coughs> His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I gotta tell you, I've missed you guys. I really have. Um, I will be here once a month, but normally, my schedule is I'm there at 7 o'clock every Sunday uh, and throughout the week at Willard. Um, to, after I leave here today, I have to leave right afterwards because I have two services to do there. So I just want to let you know I have missed you and I appreciate your prayers and concerns. The responsorial song, think about what it's saying. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Now, that leaves us open to a major question. How do we hear God's voice? And what does it mean to 
heart in our hearts. Let's go to the Gospel reading first to start opening this up. In the Gospel reading, Jesus heals a person with an unclean spirit. Now, that's kind of language we don't hear very much today. Unclean spirit. What does that mean to us? Let me put a perspective on it for you. I regularly see people every single day with unclean spirits. Addiction is another name for it. Addiction is a cruel thing. Think of an unclean spirit as something that claims over your life and you feel powerless to push it away. Many people today have addictions, not just to drugs and alcohol. Those are powerful addictions, especially in this opiate crisis. There's even a more powerful addiction than that. It's called money. The need for money creates the need for money creates the need for money. When we don't let that go, we chase it and chase it and chase it. It becomes an addiction. Anything we place before God in our lives can become an addiction. An addiction is an unclean spirit within us. Smoking can be an addiction. Drinking. Driving too fast can be an addiction. So part of this goes back to if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. How do we harden our hearts? We stop listening to the voice of God. Our addiction takes over. We have to be here. We have to be there. We have all this stuff we have to have. We have homes. We have cars. We have many things. Do we own them or do they own us? Do we own them or do they own us? That is how you know addiction. We all suffer with that at some degree or level. The thing is, is that we are called to give up those addictions, and it's hard. As a church, one of the addictions that happens to many churches is fear. They won't admit it. Fear. We have to huddle together so we're protected from the outside world. That's an addiction. The opposite of love is fear. Jesus came to teach the good news. The good news is that God is love. God loves us and he loves the world. Or he wouldn't have come. Think about it. He wouldn't have come. So where is love in our lives? Are we choosing love or are we choosing fear? To love means when we come for Eucharist, when we come to receive God's body and blood in Jesus Christ, his body becomes our body, his blood surges through our veins, we are to take that out to a world that's in pain and suffering. Think about it. There's enough pain and suffering out there. We don't need to be afraid. God's got our back. We are called to be light in a world where there's darkness. Not to curse the darkness. Not to instruct the darkness. Not to tell it where it's going wrong. To be the light. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Let's stop keeping those things that get in the way of our time with God. How many of us actually heard God's voice today speaking to us? How many of us heard it yesterday or through the week? How much time do we spend listening for God's voice? Or have our hearts become so hardened that we only want to take? You see, God has healed us in Christ. If we follow Christ, we move forward in love. We share that love in a world that is so desperate for it. And in that love, in that spirit, we become a light to 
to bring Christ to others. So think about it. If today you hear God's voice, how will you respond? and sisters, the sacrament of water to give his, God gave us the sacrament of water to give his divine life to those who believe in him. We all ask him to pour his gift of life from this font on this child he has chosen. <clears throat> Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tells us the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water which you have made as a rich symbol of the grace that you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on waters, making them the wellspring of holiness. And so, Father, we ask you, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him in the newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, have you have come here to present your son for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring up Brian in the practice of the faith, to see that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. Now, the community... Let us all join with the parents and godparents in their profession of faith by responding, I do, to the following questions. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried? rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, parents and godparents, is it your will that Ryan be baptized in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? Good. Okay, we're ready for the baptism. You can all come up. Here. Just a <laughs> oh, you're not gonna like this. You can go frontwards if it's easier. <laughs> Brian Patrick, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the Christian salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you always live as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. 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 Am
Ryan, you have become a new creation. You have clothed yourself in Christ. See this white garment? It's an outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and your friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into everlasting life of heaven. Parents and godparents. By the way, the godparent has to hold this, right? You just can't do it yet. Okay? <laughs> Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. Ryan has been enlightened by Christ. He is to always walk as a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The Lord Jesus came into this world to proclaim the good news. Why it may soon touch your ears, that you will hear the good news. And touch your mouth, that you may proclaim the praise and glory of God the Father. Ryan, you have put on Christ, and you, in him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. I love doing this Lion King thing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who are battling physical and mental illness may receive God's healing care, especially McKenna Boss, Jane Francis, Francis, Anna Sigrishi, and those mentioned in our bulletin and in our prayer book requests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our deceased loved ones may inherit the eternal joy of heaven. Especially longtime religious brother Stephen Galvin of Mount Savior Monastery and Ralph Butler. And for Jackie Rondinaro, our special intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For any prayers you may offer, you may offer in silence. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Gracious God, you know our needs, those that we have expressed, those that are in our hearts. We unite them with the sublime offering of Jesus Christ to your praise and glory. And we are led to our blessed Lord by his mother, our mother Mary, patroness of our country under the title of the Immaculate Conception, as we honor her in prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And now, Deacon Tom and our servers, Wendy and Thomas, help prepare the altar of the offerings. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 651. Open my eyes, number 651.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and sent humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever to praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so now with the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim in song. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we have lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered us covenants and through the prophets taught us to look forward to salvation. 
And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may that same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broken, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We remember Christ's own death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church. And grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. <coughs> Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. And to all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints, including St. Benedict and the patrons of our Diocese of Rochester, St. John Fisher, St. Thomas More, and all the saints in your kingdom, who are there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Mm. 
through him and with him and in him. O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the universe now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Number 783, unless I got his week. Number 783.
salvation, may the true faith ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Countdown, countdown to Lent. <laughs> Two weeks from Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and as you know, it's on Valentine's Day. And in addition to sponsoring heart-shaped crab beef cakes, <laughs> we are offering free of charge this little book we call the Black Book to accompany you during the days of Lent. It's free of charge, not 1995, free of charge. So help yourself to each one of these little books for your London journey. They're in the best news. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 901, For the Life of the World, number 901. Thank <laughs> you.